on today's episode of Robson Rover Repair, I'm getting wood. Well, hello, or sorry, I'm supposed to start off every video like this, but hello anyway, regardless, and welcome to another episode of Robson Rover Repair. This video is actually going to be all about the Rover 25 van, and we're actually getting to the end of what I would call the project. But that actually means that it's getting to the stage of it's going to be an everyday vehicle now. Um, everything I have wanted to do or needed to do is completed on the vehicle. And I'm going to actually be doing a typical day of why I got this van. So there's a couple of reasons why I really wanted it. Number one was to try and keep my existing Rovers in good condition. Number two, with it being an 05, 06, and it had quite low miles, I was like, no, this is a great opportunity to be able to daily drive a Rover for hopefully the next 10 years or so, whilst keeping my other vehicles exclusively classic. And that was a major, major contributing factor towards this decision. Number three, it's a commerce van, and as far as I'm concerned, commerce vans are cool. So, <laughs> hey, it makes sense to me, and I'm a Rover enthusiast. But the kind of stuff that I'm getting used to it for is, is you know, I might getting rid of wood, getting rid of um, like sort of garden clippings, etc. Um, I'd get in coal, I'd get in turf, whatever. It needed always to be a practical vehicle. I keep my two dogs in the back of it whenever we're going walks, etc. And yes, it pains me the fact that it's probably got the best bodywork of all my cars combined, but nonetheless, I'm still going to take it and use it in that fashion. And I think that's important because it's at that stage where it's quite clean. And it is, I would say it's fair to say it's quite clean. And if you use a really heavy black filler polish on it, you can probably disguise 95% of the marks on it. Would it ever be a show winner? No. Would it ever win trophies? No. But it's a very presentable car. And the goal is, even with my continued use in this fashion, to keep it presentable. Just because it's a rarity. And I also, from the point of view of, with it being a low mileage example, if anything was to ever happen to it, I'd want to turn around and go, argue for a higher value and I have to admit my insurance company's been pretty awesome about getting a particular agreed value on it that I would only want if anything happened to the car slash van but today's goal is simple we're out to get wood hey um, um that's the primary goal of a couple of tons to collect um unfortunately because of the towing capacity of the wee van and the ultimate size of my trailer it'll be a couple of runs but nonetheless it's going to be just how effective this wee vehicle is and at the end of it, this is going to be something I'm also going to talk as well. I'm going to sit down in the shed and work out the everyday costs and runnings, etc. of the wee van. And what it has cost me to import versus, say, purchasing a on-the-road Rover 75. I'll probably use my white 75 as an example. Because I personally feel that dealing a 25 Commerce van with the disparitation in... Um, disparitation? Disparity big words today the disparity in the price of fuel here in Northern Ireland we're talking about 20 to 25 pence per litre difference between unleaded and diesel it has become cheaper for me in the miles that I'm doing to drive the van but that's it that's the wee introduction it's not an action-packed one I will take us around the vehicle the van has changed a little bit and we'll go from there now obviously since I've got that van I've tried to keep it very very factory fitting the optional fogs um, fitting the Mark II connoisseur rims and having them resprayed in gloss back van itself I really want to keep as original looking as possible with a slight twist um, you can see I've actually got the rear Rover logos off at the minute because they're actually getting painted that will return um, tinted the rear lights and a tow bar genuinely this is as much as I have done to this vehicle since I've got it on the outside. Nearly everything else has been mechanical. And I think as a reflection of that, the car itself looks very presentable. Yes, I've had some of the paint corrected and polished and buffed out, etc. Overall, I'm very, very happy with how the car looks. For a daily driver and for a Rover that's coming up to 18 years old, there's not too many of them. And I can tell you this now, there's not too many 25s that don't have arches that aren't screwed and the other side's just as good as well so yeah I have to admit you know, I, I take pride in the vehicle and I do take pride in it but 
regardless, to me, it's still an everyday me vehicle. And obviously when we get to the interior, as you can see, the interior is still being well used. Still try to keep on top of the cleanliness. I think this is one of the big mistakes people make with these wee vans when they're using every day. They just let them get dirty and disgusting and all. Sadly, the only factor that still disappoints me is the mileage on the clock, um, which is the wrong mileage. And I still haven't found a way to get the mileage corrected. But by this stage, it's it's too late. You know, it's got 30,000 miles more on the clock than it should have. But nonetheless, I think overall, the vehicle is still very presentable, very enjoyable, and very, very comfy. I mean, I, as someone who is not of the skinnier frame, I enjoy the slightly wider seats compared to the ZR and the streetway seats. So, top marks over from fat people. So we're out in the road, and I'm just about to pull into my local petrol station to fill this car up. And... I have been really, really good with this vehicle so far. I really have found the fuel economy to be staggeringly good. Now, with the price of fuel at the minute being about 20 to 23 pence a litre difference between petrol and diesel, it's quite a disparity. It really is quite a, a, a jump, which is a real frustration because for years it was only one or two pence per litre. And it, you know, what are you meant to do about it? Um, I really think that it's very disappointing the way the British government has been behaving with fuels. And especially when you see big organisations, you know, biggest ever profit score, and you're sitting there going, you've wrapped up the price of fuels, so there's absolutely no reason for it. You're still making money. <coughs> Another subject. But regardless, I've been lucky, and I've been tracking the economy of the vehicle, and I've seen it increase as I've been doing the work and maintenance to it. When I first got it, um, was getting about 36 to the gallon. I think that was more down to the fact that I was having to drive the car a little bit harder than I initially thought because of the smaller throttle body. As I then changed the larger throttle body, I noticed that the fuel economy took a big jump and I was touching on 40 on average. What I really saw the difference was whenever I changed the um, idle air control valve and had the timing belts done and I, since then I'm getting a solid 43 to the gallon out of it. Now, you're probably thinking, oh Colin, that's quite high. I drive pretty leisurely while on the road. I mean, I'm not one of these like bandits that thrashes the living shit out of their car like some people do. And that, that's, that's, that's a story for another day. Um, I, I just laugh at people, you know, and they say, oh, I can't get 50 miles to the gallon out of my Rover 75 diesel manual or Rover 45 manual and you're going how can you not it's it's it is as easy as number one maintain the vehicle number two drive the vehicle but then this is the problem with people now they don't seem to understand how to effectively drive vehicles anymore maybe that comes from my bias having years of a history of deployment oh god this is some good roads oh glad to see my road tax in action there um <coughs> Sorry, emissions taxes it has been since the seventies. Yeah, so I think that maybe learning and driving in certain ways has perhaps been beneficial to me. I mean, I used to get well over forty to the gallon out of my Freelanders, so who knows? But yeah, this has proven to be economically very, very good by comparison to my Rover seventy five diesel. You know, I did some rough sums there. I don't want to sit and do a PowerPoint presentation on it all, but my 2001 diesel manual, I'm getting a solid 57 miles to the gallon out of it, which at today's prices is pretty good. And I'm going to put a comparison up and down here so you can see in real world as I'm talking. So I'm getting 56 miles to the gallon at roughly about 175 a litre over here for diesel. And petrol in the petrol station that I just pulled out of there was 146 a litre for unleaded and 151 for super unleaded so I went for super and before anyone says I know a K series doesn't have a knock sensor so it doesn't retard the quality of fuel in the same way that a KV6 does I know that it's a personal choice maybe I'll map the car for super unleaded one day that's another subject road tax is similar throughout the year the road tax for the commercial van being a private light goods vehicle is 180 a year and uh, the road tax for the Rover 75 manual is 200 pound a year so 
you're not really saving a huge amount there. However, when I eventually LPG this van, I know I'll get about another £25 off a year for it. It's catch 22. But at the minute, we're basing on this. What did both vehicles cost me to purchase? Well, by the time you convert euros into sterling, both vehicles ended up costing me £900, which is quite reasonable, I thought. The difference being was the white 75 came with about 11 months MOT, and this came with no MOT. I did end up having to obviously hire a trailer and diesel to tow the vehicle home, so that ended up costing me about another £100 in regards to the uh, van itself getting home safely. That's not too bad. By the time I got the vehicle MOT'd, had to do a few wee bits and pieces to it, and it was essentials, you know, it was like getting tires changed. Thankfully, I had some spare tires. Um, had to do the brakes, basic service, etc. I would say I was into the car, the van itself, for about a hundred pound. MOT test was thirty-five pound, and then by the time you tax the car, the first time registration fee here in the UK was fifty-five pound. So all in all, to get this car on the road after the initial purchase, between tax, registration fee, stuff to do for MOT, and bits and pieces, I would say I was in the £300. That's not too bad. However, I will comfortably say, having driven this car now almost exclusively every day for the last six months, I am well in pocket compared to fuel economy of the diesel compared to the distance I've been driving of the diesel and also compared to just the ease of maintenance. Like, I love the K-Series. I am one of the biggest fans of the K-Series. We all joke about it, we all laugh about it. Yes, it has its problems, but from a maintenance point of view, everything's easy to get out. From a parts point of view, you can still get all the parts from. From a cost point of view, nothing is expensive. Unfortunately, compared to the reliability side of things, if it's not looked after, if it's not maintained, it's not a, it's not like a Toyota engine. It's not like a, you know, one of those nice 1800 Toyota engines that were in the Saligas and the MR2s of the era, where you can just, you know, service them with an oil change every 15,000 miles and that's it. That's unfortunate. Because I do think had they managed to get a few of those aspects of the K-Series right, it would have been a world-beating engine. And the fact that Lotus picked it to put it into their early, you know, Lotus Elises before again ultimately being replaced by a Toyota engine, I think it says a lot to me from a power delivery point of view, from an economy point of view. It's very, very good engine. I'm still not the biggest fan of the Turbo K-Series. I just... I just feel that it's a little bit light in regards to that, but regardless. So living with this has proven to be beautiful. And it's again one of the reasons why I highly recommend it. Insurance has been comparable. Now, I have a insurance policy in this van that allows me to drive any vehicle fully comprehensive. I'm with Adrian Flux, not sponsored. And I have a thing called Flux Flex with them costs about an extra hundred pound a year. Something I've had on all my policies as long as I've been with Adrian Flux uh, allows me to drive any vehicle in the UK and Ireland. Wonderful thing to have. Any sorry, any private vehicle. Wonderful thing to have. Uh, it has helped out many a situation where maybe people have had accidents or injuries or going to collect a car for a friend or whatever. As long as the car is not in my name. So good thing to have. Insurance in the van this year is costing me £322. Now I pay that in full, so obviously if you're spreading that out, whatever, 10% extra. And this year is the first year I have not had my Rover 75 as my main car. The van is now my main vehicle. Previously to this, the 75 was costing me 360 a year, which again, pretty reasonable. And you may be thinking to yourself, wow, Colin, you're 40 years old, you have 23 years, no pins bonus. That's pretty high. Welcome to Northern Ireland, where everything is more expensive than you dare to imagine. Um, compared to the rest of the UK, everything's usually, when it comes to car insurance, when it comes to all that sort of stuff, you can lop on another fifth instantly, just before you've even tried to negotiate prices. 
goes back to the troubles, goes back to the, the you know, the thefts, the things like that. We have quite a high rate of uninsured vehicles over here. And it's all to do with how our claims are settled in court compared to England, Scotland, Wales. But yeah, overall, fuel economy-wise, driving-wise, economy-wise, it's just proven to be a really reliable little vehicle. And it's why I think you guys at home should take the opportunity to find and purchase and own one of the fastest disappearing Rover vehicles on the road today. And especially if you buy one that has been converted into the AMG and return it back to your Rover as it should be. Controversial statement, I know. Oh, the joys. Well, it's not going to load itself. Might as well get into it now. Well, that's us loaded up then. Hardly exciting, I know, but still, nonetheless. This definitely has proved to be one of the best investments I've ever made. I've always had tow bars in my vehicles, but I just think the combination of the two, along with this itself being a tipping trailer as well, really nice combination, just practical and a sweet mesh net as well, being a handy wee thing I got off Amazon. I'm actually going to link that one on Amazon because I find this is a good size one. Stretches nicely on the trailers and also fits the uh, Rover 75 Tourers very nicely in the boot too. So after successfully returning home with the wood and unloading it, etc, etc, I think that the conclusion I can come to about the little 25 van is that it's just really proven to be an enjoyable vehicle deal. But there's one major disadvantage of it. And to be honest, it probably sounds really pernickety, but it's a disadvantage I have from living here in Northern Ireland, out in the countryside. I'll show you this now. The eternal problem of owning a black car, no matter how much you try and keep it clean, especially living in the countryside, I'm going to zoom out a wee bit, it just it never ceases to amaze me the ways that we find to get manure and horse manure and cow manure and sludge and crap and all over it. <laughs> what are you meant to do with it? Like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Better break out the jet wash anyway. It is Saturday. Give it its once a week clean. Try and keep on top of it and keep the rust away from it. But yeah, that's it. That's the end of the van. Not literally, hopefully, but that's the end of this project. Um, there won't be any more updates on the channel about this. We go on back to the real projects, to be honest. It's just so happened to be that with everything going on, everything has been very focused on the van recently. So yes, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's more of a personal update. It's more of a mixture. People are always asking about what's going on here, what's going on there. So now you just know. Next video, I'm hopefully going to finish that off here at the minute. I'm still doing the, uh, which is the Rice MG Rover, Rover vehicle for you to own, based on affordability. Um, and I hope maybe this little van is something that people maybe consider then going forward, you one themselves. Appreciate we're entering into these times of diesel being a bad word and big capacity engines and everyone wants electric cars, but maybe consider the likes of this as a, an alternative to the obvious commercial uh, classic cars like likes of a Land Rover commercial or whatever and maybe think hmm, handy to have a little vehicle that you can just nip around in but regardless thank you very much everyone as always if you just want to sponsor the channel you just know where to find the YouTube merch and links below if you've enjoyed the content always like subscribe comment share all that stuff helps me out greatly meantime I'm gonna get back into this big trailer here get this all unloaded uh, get the car jet washed before it gets too dark and who knows, I might even get my feet up and get a cup of tea. Can't see that happen. See you in the next video, folks, and bye for now.